Hi guys, I'm Elle and welcome back to my ethical fashion YouTube channel and today in this video I'll be super transparent about my financial situation. I'm a relatively new ethical fashion content creator and I've always just wished others could share how much they're earning. I've seen like sustainable fashion influencers and content creators but I have no idea how they're making their money and maybe you've experienced this with your favorite influencer or your content creator. You're like what how how are they doing this you know? So I'm really gonna break down my life so you understand how much I'm making, why I'm making it and where that money is going. I also really feel this is important to talk about because we spend so much of our waking day clogged in to work to make a living and it also really shapes how our personal identity often shapes our ego for the worst and often enough sadly it eats away at our well-being so yeah this is something I've really thought a lot about. I do spend a lot of time online so really wish creators normalized just showing a breakdown of what they're they're making and how they're spending it and why they're spending what they're spending and one of the interesting things to that thought is that sustainable fashion bloggers content creators experts are always saying put your money where your mouth is at like be a conscious consumer vote with your money but I never know what they are actually doing how do I know they didn't buy from Amazon that week how do I know they didn't get money from a big fossil fuel company those are things I've been thinking a lot about within my susty journey and so so I want to be the example that I want to see so I'm going to be sharing the full breakdown of what I'm earning how I'm spending it and why I'm spending it so if you like that sort of content feel free to watch the whole video so getting into it I'm gonna start screen sharing my computer screen that's down over here this is what I'm looking at but basically I'm going to discuss July we're already in August and so this is all things that have transpired and I've recorded for the sake of this video I work a standard Monday through Friday nine to five job so an eight hour hellhole every week and i only get paid sadly 19 dollars an hour even though i have two bachelors i have a ba in business management and I have a ba in apparel merchandising but on a weekly basis i only make 760 dollars before taxes and monthly that's 3040 dollars before taxes and i've noticed that my check bi-weekly is 1200 so that means I make $2,400 a month, which is very little if you think about it given the current state of our world. But I am set to have my hours reduced down to 30 hours given some job drama situation. So I think it'll clear, clear up some more time for like YouTube for me and stuff like that, but it will hit my very low income. So, Going with that context into the rest of the video, I just want to explain that I have no other income source. I'm a relatively new content creator, so I'm not making anything off of YouTube, anything off of social medias. I solely rely on my nine to five to survive. Um, but I do consider content creation a job. I put about 20 to 30 hours every week to make either YouTube videos, blog posts, TikToks and Instagram content. Um, I do have a Patreon, but I have yet to even get like one supporter, one subscriber on there. So that's zero. And I'm not making any ad money from my YouTube channel, even though I have been turning on, I have turned on the monetization feature. Um, and like I said, I have a blog. I put about three to five hours into that. Um, and I'm starting up a podcast, which takes which takes three to five hours on a monthly basis, which is not a lot of time. But again, I'm not making money off of this. And then I also do fashion activism, not only on a national level, but on a global level. So I'm always jumping on a lot of Zoom calls, a lot of different things throughout the day. And that takes about six to eight hours every week. And then I'm trying to get into reselling clothing to make something from that. So that's right now five hours and I'm just starting off. So I'm a really busy person. I think I do may have to make some sacrifices somewhere, but because I'm getting my hours reduced down to 30 hours a week, I can manage things a bit more and start hopefully making money through putting more time into my content creation. And so this leads me into my budget. 
everyone is living differently, everyone has their own needs, everyone has their own costs, and this is my personal experience, this is my life, so I hopefully don't trigger anyone or upset anyone in how I'm living. This is just simply my situation. I recently moved back from Montana to Illinois, so I'm in a very good place despite the move and despite the change. But here is my full breakdown of where money should go ideally. I basically listed everything that I could possibly spend money on given that I only am making $2,400 a month. Fortunately, I don't pay rent right now. That's very much a miracle. But I do pay $500 in student loans. I don't pay utilities or electricity, which again, is very rare. I feel like a lot of our checks are eaten up by either rent and by utilities slash electricity. Um, and then for cell phones, I only pay $20 a month. I have a super cheap plan. I try not to use it. I rely heavily on Wi-Fi for it to function. If I'm not connected to Wi-Fi, I basically don't have good service or good features to use on my phone. And then I do buy food. I try to spend only $90 a month and I buy all my food on my credit card and I try to stay within the $90 limit a month so that I can build up my credit score which is around 760 right now and I didn't even know what my credit score was a couple months ago which is a huge improvement for me working towards owning my own studio or renting my own studio and then for gas I currently don't own a car so I'm not spending any gas money for Squarespace have multiple different websites. I have one for the national activism that I'm doing. I have one for a local sustainable fashion group that I'm forming. And then for my blog post, I'm also paying for that. And that's roughly $40. I think it's gone up to $50 because of the third site I just made. For car slash renter's insurance, I used to pay this. I used to be an eBay investment. I don't know what that means. I should update that. But I used to have a car in Montana and I paid insurance for it. But I no longer have that cost. So that's at zero dollars. And then clothing slash knickknacks. I do spend a lot of money on clothing slash knickknacks. I'm fully knowledgeable about that. And so I try to keep it to a small budget of $40 every month. And then miscellaneous expenses, which can be like shampoo, soaps, um, toothbrushes, whatever. All those miscellaneous random stuff, $50 a month. So this is a very tight, strict budget. Again, this is my case. This isn't something everyone can live off of, and I fully recognize that. And then I try to save $500 every month just to have something in my savings account. In total, with all like the bills, it's $1,240, which is half of what I make at my job. And so the rest hopefully will go to my checkings account, which is $1,160, which is really great. I've heard people say that by the end of the month, they're living check by check. Like they literally haven't been able to save any money. They're not able to put anything in their checkings account. It's really difficult to build up your credit score given the rent that's happening. I've been hearing some people say they pay up to 1200 for one bedroom in a shared apartment with random roommates, which is crazy. So in my context, if I was paying $1,000 for a room, I would only have $160 left for my checkings account. Despite being able to save $500, just imagine only having $160 left after your check after paying everything. That's just mind-boggling. That's just like scary to me. So I don't wish that for anyone, but I understand if you have to pay all that, like that's not in your control. And so going down into what I actually spent, I think this is what is really important for me to understand for the people that I watch, for the people that I support. I want to know how they're spending their money and why they're spending their money. I want to know what they're spending their money on, when, how, why. So as a ethical fashion content creator, I'm going to do, be doing these every month and just detailing everything. So on July 1st, I bought a carpet and a new mattress and I spent about $200 on it, which is a lot of money. But if you think about it, it's, it was actually a deal because carpets for a room go crazy expensive. Like one time I spent $80 on just a carpet and I bought that from Menards, which isn't like a super expensive place. 
And then mattresses can range to like $400, $500 or even more. And so to buy a carpet and a new mattress for just $200 was a steal. Um, I then in July 2nd um, spent $11 for Spotify. I cannot live without my music, to be honest. That's like one of my biggest hacks in life, just being able to pop in a headphone and just listen to music. And here on July 5th is the cell phone payment plan of around $20, so $21.37. And then July 5th, I went out and had tacos with AM. I think that was supposed to be FAM, like FAM. And I spent $25.81, so that was huge, given I don't have a huge budget for food or for knickknacks. And then July 5th, I did buy a new iPhone and a case to go with it, and that was $400. But I desperately needed a new phone just because the one that I have right now does not work for the life of it. I've had it for, again, three years, and it's just a little, a little old grandpa at this point. So I had to upgrade, and it was an investment for sure. And honestly, this again is an investment because I don't buy phones often. So I'm probably going to buy my next phone in like two or three years. So this is a one-off, really rare case. And then July 6th, I spent gas for work. So it was a weekend. I had to drive a tr truck and it didn't have gas. There was no company card with me. So I had to spend that, but I was reimbursed. So this one is technically not included in my expenses, but it was listed in what I was charged for in my in my card. And then July 15th, I had pizza with my family. So that was $28.95. So boom, there goes my miscellaneous knickknack budget. <laughs> um, but in that same day, I went downtown and I spent $5 on parking because there was no free parking, which sucks. That's just the case for my city. It's very inaccessible, so I was forced to pay that. And then July 18th, I added a cell phone data add-on. My plan is super cheap, but you can add data to your plan. So I was like, okay, I need it. And I paid the $10, which is really small, but it was good for the rest of the month. Um, on July 22nd, I bought food from Walmart and I bought room decoration stuff. Came out to $70, which is a huge overspend and I knew that, but I just recently moved into this new room. Everything was empty and I was like, okay, well I need to do something, you know, like I literally have nothing. I just moved back and it was just a blank, just blank wall. So I was like, okay, well, let me just make this purchase and not buy anything else for months and months. Um, so I got like lamps and lights and stuff like that and um, on July 2nd I also went to their store I was on a shopping mood on that day and I spent $28.71 I think I bought more decoration honestly don't remember I must have been clothes or shoes or something again not the greatest choice um, and then July 23rd I had a Squarespace website charge, so that was $29. And then July 23rd, again, I um, had to buy a new cell phone plan for my new phone. So my old phone number wasn't able to roll over. I had problems with the SIM card, with like all of the tech things going on, with transferring stuff. So I had to buy a new cell phone plan and that came out to $110. But they said it was a yearly plan um so i think it should be set for a year paying that amount so that's good and then i made my credit card payment where i accidentally charged my contact lens exam and other miscellaneous stuff so i went way over the, the ideal 90 dollars mistakes happened but i had to pay off the 206 dollars a contact lens appointment being around 160 dollars is crazy but that's another conversation. And again, I went to the thrift store. I need to avoid thrift stores. I spent $8.32 on there. Um, and then I spent pizza, pizza money, and that was $29.95. Oof, I don't have a lot of money, so that was a bad choice. Google fees, $2. 
so random. And then I went to Dollar General for snacks and I spent $14.36, but I did get shampoo and I did get self-care items and personal hygiene items. So it was truly justified. But then I went back and I did a boo-boo and I bought a matcha. But matchas honestly are so healing. Um, so it actually saved my life. That's $7.60, well spent. Not really, but <laughs> we'll justify it, I guess, because I like matcha. And then I had to spend money on eye drops. I've had a series of like issues with my contact lenses, hence the contact lens appointment and trying to find new ones. Um, so I had to spend $12.49 getting eye drops for them, for my eyes, and then had to pay student loans off. So that was $500. And then to get the prescription, for the eye contacts for six months, I paid $166.87, but they did fudge up my order, so I'll have to pay that again next, this month, August, for the next prescription because they didn't give me the right prescription. So it's actually gonna be about $300 for contacts. So hopefully they can reimburse me, but that's my July, that's, that's what I spent. In some, I feel like I did go to a thrift store a lot. That's my weakness. I spent way too much money on pizza and eating out. And yeah, I know I don't spend a lot of money compared to other people, but this is a lot for me. One of the things I could improve on, honestly, in terms of all of this is I probably could have invested in a cheaper phone, could have waited for Amazon Prime. But I don't like Amazon Prime. I got so much hate because of this reel, but that kind of sums up my perspective on that day. And I could honestly have someone else pay for my Spotify premium, but I just need to ask. But I know they're gonna pay it if I do ask. And I even got offered the mattress for free. Someone offered to pay for it and I said no. Mistake. But I, I wanted to pay for it. Not the, not the wisest choice if someone's wanting to pay it for you. And then the cell phone data add-on, the $10, was something I only needed because I accidentally leave my data on when I shouldn't. I need to turn it on and off and I always just accidentally leave it on. So that was just $10 that could have been saved. That's, that, that's things I can continuously improve for, for August. But some of the good things that I did do was that I only spent money on one matcha for the whole entire month, which is literally unheard of. Um, helped save a lot of money. And I bought really what I needed. So those investment pieces of the cell phone, the contact appointment, the contact lenses. I actually hadn't gone to the eye doctor for the past two years and my astigmatism was getting worse in my right eye. So go to your eye doctor even though it does cost a lot of money and they will mess up your eye contacts um hopefully it doesn't happen to you though like no bad karma and pro is that i could have spent even more money on food and snacks but i held myself back so that's a plus and big pros is that there is no rent and no like miscellaneous bills i have to pay no gas, no insurance that I have to pay. So that's how I'm saving a lot of my money. But yeah, this is it for this month. Let me know what you thought. I feel like a lot of my temptations slash desires was seen in me going to thrift stores and me um, spending a lot of money on fast food. But let me know what your vices are where you can't help but spend money. And if you have any tips for reducing how much you spend in thrift stores, I feel like $30 is a pretty reasonable amount of money to spend at a thrift store if you're getting like a large bag of stuff. But it doesn't justify that if you're buying stuff you don't need, then you're te technically overspending and over consuming. So let me know what your perspective is of my finance situation, what you want to see more of, what you wish I could have delved into. Um, but this is just me sharing my finances for everyone to see online and holding myself accountable and being really honest with how much I'm spending, where I'm spending it, and why I'm spending it. Um, I'm excited to further explore other income sources and I'll definitely share with you what those are, which can be YouTube, my blog, reselling, ebooks, workshops, all those good things. So. 
I once I start getting money from those I'll start sharing that but for now I'm a nine-to-five girly sharing my journey as a low-income ethical fashion content creator so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up feel free to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video peace and love out oh.